In the last episode, I said this. Next episode is the exhaust. I'm gonna be a dictator again. And that was a goddamn lie. Instead, we're not gonna be making exhausts. We're gonna be finishing the chassis. Finishing the chassis. Helicopter, helicopter. Welcome back to the only build channel on YouTube that drags out projects as long as possible. In the background, I've been crying because my last delightful project has been sold. Which means there's a hole in my tin man's heart and a lot more space in my workshop. You might also notice something else is missing. There's no body or chassis sitting there. This is why. Now unfortunately, as I'm such an underprivileged gentleman, I only have one hoist in my workshop. I know, this is an extreme poverty situation. But what this means is that if the engine's out of the chassis, I've got nothing to rest it on that I can wheel out of the way. And I don't desperately want to drop this engine. Again. Again. So just some forewarning. This might be one of my longer videos, because I've got lots of things to do, and I don't think I can drag them out across multiple episodes. So unfortunately, my loss is your gain. If you're into that sort of thing. Anyway, I've been to Bunnings and bought some things. Which are hopefully gonna replace these disgusting rickety things that came from eBay that can't cope with the loads they say they can. Because unfortunately, all the wheels bent and they now sit at funny angles. I know, it's a little bit early in the video for a montage. So brace yourselves as you watch me build a really badly made frame that I haven't pre-designed because I don't really care about it, but all it's for is moving the engine from there to somewhere else. So let's begin. This is just a brief interim, so you can see how disgusting some of these welds actually are. I have best guessed the machine setup, not checked it, haven't adjusted it, and I'm basically welding through galvanized. Hideous. Moving on. Welcome back. How was your rest? Thanks, battery, for running out at the best possible moment. Anyway, it's finished. Now this thing is hopefully going to allow me to move the engine around the workshop without having to drop it several times or make a mess. And if I was funny, I would have thought of a name for it. So now you can sit in the corner and sulk like your petrol counterpart over there. Now what I'm going to be doing now that I've got a full tank of gas to play with is finishing the chassis. That's right, I said finishing. Now what I've done is ordered these. These are internal chassis braces. They're basically plates that weld to the inside of your chassis. All the way along there. And seeing as this is a midget chode Nissan Patrol, and these are from a long wheelbase GQ, they're not going to fit. However, 
these contours are the same and those contours are the same the only bit I have to modify is the stuff in between so that's just going to be a case of shortening a couple of these to make them fit with each other so that won't be too hard the other thing I'm going to do is finish off the engine mounts and make sure they're welded to Nissan spec if you're doing this at home and you can't find the spec of the Nissan bodybuilders thing just look at the other welds on the chassis for example everything along here is stitch welded with a gap in between which means that somewhere in the build spec is going to be something saying the same so translated to weird body kit language this means that you're not supposed to weld around the whole thing on Nissan Patrol so what I need to do is look up the specs to see how big the stitch needs to be and how big the gap needs to be and what I'm going to do is firstly the whole chassis is going to be stripped there'll be no diffs there'll be no brake lines no fuel tank springs anything it'll be completely bare then i'm going to grind all the paint off ready for welding and get rid of everything that's attached to that and then i'll use some high percentage zinc coating to go between the two layers because if you don't do that you're going to have bare metal rotting away from the inside out now you might think all this effort and doing weld specs on this sort of thing is completely irrelevant but it's the difference between getting your car certified and not now once again, similar to the handbrake video, you watch a load of videos about the thing you're trying to do and you realize the internet is full of crap. Half the chassis brace kits, all these people weld around, or they don't put any prep behind their little metal sandwich, which means their cars are gonna rust to pieces. So if you do it right, you only have to do it once. Now going back to these engine mounts, this is where I'm probably a little bit hypocritical because this style of engine mount is probably not found anywhere on a Nissan. But also, you're never gonna find a weld around a radius. Even on the original engine mounts, they were only welded on the flats and there was a relief cut for the radius. So I'm going to do the same for this. It'll be welded on the top and welded along the flat in here and I'll leave the metal bit untouched. The only other thing I'm going to do to finish off these engine mounts is weld a square plate from here to the chassis and weld up the inside on this edge here. And this is going to give me some stability in this direction. I could take the credit for this, but all I've done is copy the original Nissan engine mount designs. Anyway, now for the next part of this video. Why am I in the 76 of dreams? Well, I invite you to join me on a journey through time and space, on an adventure that takes us through Facebook Marketplace. Now when using Facebook Marketplace, you have to take everything with a pinch of salt. You have to assume that every listing is an absolute bloody lie and the photos are photoshopped using beauty filters. This was no different. And the result of my travels is this. A pair of diffs. But I've already got diffs, why do I need these? Well, these are the diffs from a 4.5 litre TI GU Patrol. So they are wider, bigger, better, harder, faster, stronger, and many other words. Now this one has the added advantage of having a factory rear locker that's just operated by a vacuum solenoid. But the main thing is the fact that it's littered with these little electrical connectors. But what are they for? Well, when you're dealing with fancy trash like this, it has other luxuries like ABS and traction control. And if you're stupid enough to do an engine conversion and keep an automatic gearbox, you need to keep all these sensors so that the car knows when to change gear. So keeping all these gubbins makes it easier for me further down the line to get everything working properly. Anyway, that's not what we're doing today. Today is about finishing these engine mounts, welding in those weird plates I talked about a second ago, and maybe some painting. This means naturally it's time for a montage. comment section. Do your worst. So dramas aside, I'm probably still going to have to tidy up some of those welds. But what I also have to do is get the chassis back to almost nothing so I can clean it, weld those weird little reinforcement plates on it, and then hopefully get it painted and therefore finished. 
So I'm going to do that now. Now in the ideal world, which this is definitely not, I'm at the stage now where I can push a little button over there and my precariously suspended frame is going to elegantly lift into the air. And as we know that's definitely not going to happen, let's see how this pans out in the real world. Now I would describe that as a bit successful. Precarious out of 10 on the I'm not dead scale. And now you can see why this video is a little bit longer than normal. And it's mostly because I can't really do anything with my workshop with this chassis standing here. And I can't exactly move it either. So I'd better get on with it and finish it. Now the plan for this is gonna to be to clean it as well as I can. And once I've done that, I can prep the area for welding so that I can put these little infill panels in. But they're gonna need modifying by themselves, as we talked about earlier. So, step one, cleaning. Let cleaning commence. <laughs> Jump cut. That's right, I've been doing a lot of things to this in the background. And a lot of these things have been stealing ideas from Aussie Arvos, because they did this quite recently. So much to the dismay of my neighbours, I've finished off my welds, had this chassis outside, power washed the whole thing, and rust converted it. So hopefully, everything is ready to go for welding in these weird little plate things that I've mentioned so many times, that I've now lost. There they are. So the process is actually quite simple. Lift the chassis off the ground, clamp the plates in place, weld them in. Only mine comes with a twist, and we'll see why. Now this is roughly how these plates are going to go. As you can see, this one fits beautifully. And so does this one, until you get to here. Now this little bolt hole is where the rear radius arm bolts in, or whatever you call it. And on the GQ wagon, it has this one that goes on the back, with this bit going over that hole. So what it means is, I'm going to have to chop this panel here, and chop this one about here, and make the third panel very small. But that's about it. Aside from that, it's going to be a very easy modification to do. Now 
And there you go. Thanks to minuscule modifications and two cuts with an angle grinder, everything's solved. So all I've just got to do is draw around it, repeat it on both sides, and grind off the paint underneath. And this is just about how it looks all tacked into place. It doesn't look too bad, but what I'm going to do is just tidy up those edges before I weld them. And then do that stitch welding all the way around. I think I might have mentioned that before, but I can't remember. So before I do the full welding, I'm going to do the same on the other side. But you're not going to see that, because I think this video has gone on long enough already. But if you do want to watch me do the other side, go back a few minutes and hold your screen up against a mirror. I also want to add some wisdom to justify the reasons why I'm not welding all the way around this. Now underneath here, the frame is full of holes. Like this. There's about 10 in this little area alone. So if you fully weld all the stuff around here, regardless of whether you weld around these holes here, you're still going to get dirt and water and stuff sandwiched between these two layers. That's why if you weld them all around, all you're going to get is what I guess could be described as a blister. And that's just going to eat its way out from the inside. So if you do these stitch welds along the top and leave a gap, it gives the water a way in, but it also gives the water a way out. Now what I'll probably end up doing is sealing off the top. So I'll do my stitch weld, but then between them I'll put some sealant in between. But I'm going to leave the bottom ones open, for the reasons I just mentioned. Anyway, enough talking about chassis things. Not really.